This is going to be a short video where we show the steps that you would go through using a scanning electron microscope, which we call an SEM. We're using as an example here a simple copper penny. And we're going to do an example of what you might want to look at um, so you have a better idea what you can use an SEM for. The copper penny is over on the left. Um, you can see, if you look by Lincoln's nose, where we've scraped away a little bit of the surface um, oxidation and deposits, um, you get oxygen forming with the copper on the surface, but you also get oils and things from your hands that um, form a, a hard tarnish on the surface. We want to see a little bit of the pure copper underneath. The object over on the right is the um, SEM stub that we use for mounting. Um, it is a simple aluminum disc with a little pin out the back that allows us to mount the machine. And the black thing on the surface of that is a, um, it's a double-sided sticky tape that has a lot of carbon in it and it allows us to elect um, conduct electricity. So the electron beam will come down, strike the penny, and then pass through that tape and through the aluminum stub and hence out the machine. It's part of how you prepare your samples. But again, this is a short video intended just to just give you a sense of what are the steps that you would use an SEM for. Now we're looking at a penny which has been loaded into the SEM. It's been partially loaded in that is, it was loaded into the sample holder, placed in the machine, the shield lowered down, and it has been brought into sort of the antechamber of the machine. It's an area inside the machine, it's not under vacuum yet, and there's a light microscope which allows you to image what you're seeing. It lets you get your sample oriented and get a sense of what you're looking at. You can see this here, it's a color image, regular light image of the penny. You can see that it is a tarnished penny, and I've scratched one area of the razor blade to show the bright pure copper metal underneath. You can see the image twice here. The large image screen is where your working space will be. The upper right hand corner is sort of an orientation picture and that picture will actually continue on with us as we move the sample into the machine and begin using the scanning electron microscope properly. Now we're going to jump to where we've inserted the penny into the vacuum chamber. That is the machine has moved it from the little antechamber where you have a light microscope farther back to where it's actually part of the vacuum system. The electron beam is coming down, striking the surface of the penny, and electrons are coming back up to the detector where we can see them. In a minute we're going to look at how we can do a chemical analysis on the penny, but at the moment what you're seeing is a surface, and you're seeing slight chemical differences between one part and another. The electrons come down, strike the surface of the penny, and move back up to the detector. So Certain areas with low average atomic densities don't reflect electrons very well and they appear dark. Other areas are very bright because they're doing a more efficient job of reflecting or backscattering those electrons upwards to the detector. Again, in a minute, we're going to look at how we would do a chemical analysis on the surface, but right now we're using the backscatter electron detector to give us a sense that there are different chemical compositions on the surface of this penny. Now we've moved to a section of the penny where I've taken a steel razor blade and I've scraped off some of the surface contamination. You can see in the image here that we are looking at a darker area and these light streaks across it. You'll notice that the software has changed. Um, we're now looking at the analysis software. The analysis software first imports an image so that it can control the location of the beam, the electron beam. I've identified two areas where we're going to do an analysis and I've already run the analyses. It will actually, during the analysis, keep the beam in this area to analyze just that part. So we've analyzed a little bit of the dark part and a little bit of the light part. We're going to switch from this view to one that shows you what's coming into the spectrometer. This is a histogram, meaning we've indicated on the y-axis up and down how many inputs occurred, in this case how many x-rays came into the detector that had a particular energy, a particular place here on the x-axis. This scale is an energy. You read it as one, two, three thousand electron volts. So what we see in this image is a series of peaks or peak shapes which the computer has gone ahead and attempted to identify. In this case, it's done a very good job of identifying them. Sometimes it needs some help. What this means is that at this particular location, a lot of 
x-rays which are indicative of copper were produced and entered into the detector. You'll see a peak here for copper, here for copper, and another set of peaks here for copper. And this is due to the atomic structure of copper and the many orbitals for electrons that it possesses compared to a simpler atom such as chlorine, which just has a single peak here. This is spot one, which has a little bit of the contamination on it. You can see that there's a, a decent amount of oxygen, which a pure copper surfaced penny would not have. Um, a fair amount of carbon and also some chlorine. The oxygen and carbon are basically due to oils which have been converted to a thick dark substance on the surface of the coin. Um, and the chlorine is most likely salt from sweat from people's fingerprints. Um, and you can see a little bit of that here. If we look at the cleaned off area, point two, you'll notice that there's no chlorine peak and there's less oxygen present. We say the beam is trying to be in here. It doesn't have to do a perfect job of this. Some of the beam will be detecting outside of the area. And this was a quick jo cleaning job where I simply used a razor blade to clean off the surface. But again, you can see that we're now seeing through that surface contamination at what is underneath. And this is an important consideration when you're doing analyses. What you're getting is the surface. If there is some contamination or a thin layer on the surface, that will affect your results. And since, it's, since it is at the surface, it can affect your results more than you would expect because it doesn't have to get through any sample to get out. It's already at the surface.